Water balances are going to be a fundamental organizing principle for field measurements. That's why I've been having you spend some time learning about water balances as part of this class. To, so to show you how this is all, will all fit together, let me just draw a sketch here of a aquifer watershed system. So there's the stream. And I'll have give a little bit of a 3D effect. So there's the stream that goes down in 3D. And this is in cross-section now. Here's the water table. So we've got a Vado zone. And we've got the saturated zone here. And we've got a stream. OK, so we can do balances on these three regions. Let me just finish the sketch like that. There we've got kind of a nice 3D sketch. So we can do balances on all of these regions. Um, Vado zone, in all cases, we're going to have a flux in, flux out, and the change of storage. So we got a flux in, that'll be infiltration. And a flux out, ET and recharge here and we've got some water content here that'll be the how water is stored in the Vado zone. Okay so let's see infiltration well that's a flux and we can measure fluxes in the Vado zone if we know the head gradient and we know what the hydraulic conductivity is we can then use Darcy's law. So we need ways to measure the hydraulic head get the gradient and measure K up here at shallow depths. Down here for recharge, well, we could do the same thing. If we can estimate what the flux is, recharge is a flux, so that might be a way to estimate what recharge is. We might be able to calculate recharge as well. Um, ET, this is going to be a flux that will be coming out of the Vado zone. And so there are a couple ways of doing that. What we'll use is a, a land pan. So we'll set up a pan of water that'll be a, a it's a, a particular regulation size pan. We have evaporation out of that pan and we'll use that to calculate the, what the ET is. The water stored in the Vado zone, we'll have a couple measures of that. We can uh, measure it with uh, some gauges, some capacitance gauges or time domain reflectometry. Um, we also can measure it with some laboratory measurements. Okay, so we'll have some various aspects of the Vado zone covered. The saturated zone, well, we have these components of the saturated zone. We've got recharge, we've got groundwater flow, and we've got base flow. So recharge, well, we just talked about how we might be able to measure that from, from the um, Vado zone. So if we've done that, we can couple that in and use that as an estimate of what the recharge is. Groundwater flow, we've done this already. We can do three-point problems, and that'll give us the gradient, the head gradient, and the direction. And so if we know the head gradient, and if we also know K, the hydraulic conductivity, then we can tell what the flux in the Vado zone is. And the base flow here, well, we could, um, we could set up a seepage meter. That would be a, a pan that flows where the, the water goes into the pan and we collect it in a bag. Um, so we can measure the flux coming into the stream bed we can also measure the hydraulic head gradient and the hydraulic conductivity. So we've got a couple ways of getting the base flow flux coming into the stream bed. And then if we were to do a balance on the stream itself, we've got a flow coming in, a volumetric flow, and a volumetric flow going out. And we've got the base flow coming in. So we already talked about base flow. And what we need then is a way to measure the volumetric flow. And so the approach there is to use a current meter. 
and you measure the stream current at a variety of places and integrate that and that gives you the the total flow okay so there are various ways that we have to use field measurements to determine fluxes and storages and they're all kind of linked together and these are these will be the things that we'll be measuring over the next week or so so I've got them summarized here here's the Vedo zone and to do the flux in and out we'll use tensiometers to measure the hydraulic head gradient and we've got a disk infiltrometer and a Guelph permeameter both of those will give us the hydraulic conductivity the disk infiltrometer does it at a surface the Guelph permeameter is the hydraulic conductivity in the subsurface so we can put this information together to get fluxes within the Vedo zone. Out flux is uh, evapotranspiration and we'll use a, a land pan and the water content is a capacitance gauge time domain reflectometry and we can also use this technique where we're just taking a sample we dry it in the laboratory and we measure the water content there. Another possibility is to use an in-situ extensometer this is a technique that we've been developing at Clemson where we can uh, measure the deformation that's caused by a change in water content and use that to estimate uh, change in storage in the Vedo zone. This is something that even though we are working on it here at Clemson it's, uh, it's not really a technique that lends itself to being implemented uh, in a field camp setting so we can we can tell you about it and we could even show you guys but we probably won't really be able to implement this as part of fuel camp. The Class A land pan is used to estimate the evapotranspiration off of a field. The way that it works is that we've got a pan here of a regulation size and depth and material. It's a metallic pan with vertical sides and you measure the evaporation out of the pan by measuring the water level at different times. You need to measure the water level very precisely and so the way that this is done is to use a hook gauge shown here and the hook gauge works by if this is the water level then you submerge the hook and you have this threaded piece right there you uh, turn the knob and that raises the hook until it just touches the water surface and you can see it touch by this little it forms a little dimple and then you measure the location of that point when it evaporates the water evaporates the water level drops you repeat the process and you get the change in the water level over a change in time and that gives you the evaporation rate out of the pan this is a stilling well this is just a chamber to isolate the measurement hook gauge uh, from the rest of the water so that if there's some uh, waves are sloshing around in the pan that this stills the water surface right in the vicinity of the hook. So what's done then is to use this device and measure the water level change with time and this is under this ideal condition and we're interested in what the evaporation here off of this grass or maybe uh, off of this material and so what's been done is, is people have used these land pans uh, they've measured the, the evaporation rate out of a pan and then they've also measured evaporation off of various different surfaces grassy surfaces various different crops and then they correlate the two evaporation rates and what's done then is to use the pan evaporation you then look up what's called a crop factor and you multiply the pan evaporation rate by a crop factor and you can then use that to estimate what the evapotranspiration rate is so here's an example um, this is for various different types of crops and it even gives a crop factor for different stages in the growth so you can see that uh, I guess right at the beginning a, uh, a bean say it's a broad bean and it's growth stage one the crop factor is equal to one so the evapotranspiration by that crop is equal to the pan evaporation but as time progresses 
the crop is evaporating water faster than the evaporation rate out of the pan. So um, you can look up these crop factors for many different uh, types of, uh, of vegetation, uh, different crops, but also different uh, types of, of naturally occurring vegetation. And this gives a way to estimate the evapotranspiration done by plants from a standard measurement that's fairly easy to make. Within streams, we can measure the influx using a seepage meter, uh, as well as the head gradient and the hydraulic conductivity. The flow in a stream, the, the outflow, or, um, well, it would be just the flow within the stream, which, which may well be changing. That's done with a current meter. The kind of current meter that we'll measure, we'll use is a, a pygmy meter. And then storage within the stream is done by changes in stage. The groundwater flux and storage measurements, recharge, we'll get that from the Veda zone. Uh, lateral flow, three point problem to get the head gradient, K, pumping and slug. So you guys should all be experts in this. The discharge out of an aquifer from a seepage meter or from the vertical head gradient. So this is coupling the aquifer to the stream. And then storage changes within the aquifer would result from uh, water level changes times a specific yield. That'll give us a volumetric change of storage within the aquifer. Okay, so that's gonna be how the concepts of storage and flux from water balances translate into measurements that we can make and indeed these will be the measurements that we're making in the field.